Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and in today's video I am here to update you how I did on my January 2020 crafty goals. I'm going to tell you which goals I crushed and which goals crushed me. I hope you'll stick around and find out more. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here. Earlier this month, I shared with you that I'm going to be participating in Amalia's 2020 Crafty Goals collab here on YouTube. If you want to watch my intro video, which goes into a lot more depth about my overall and my specific goals, I will have that video linked in the description box below, and I will put it as a card at the end of the video. Now, this is a collaboration, so I hope that once you're done watching my video, you'll go check out how everyone else is doing. All of their channels are linked below, or if you want to just see all the videos, you can click on the hashtag, hashtag Crafty Goals with Amalia, and that will take you to all the videos that have been uploaded so far for the collaboration. Now, if you're inspired to come up with some crafty goals of your own and give it a try this year, make sure to use that same hashtag in the description box of your videos or on any photos that you share on Instagram. Like I mentioned for my goals this year, I have an overall goal and then I have smaller, more specific goals to reach those. My overall goals are to craft more, spend less, share the love, and grow. And then I have lots of specific, smaller goals to meet those. Before though I tell you how I did on my specific goals, let's go to my crafty tracker. I thought it would be fun to track my progress in a visual way. So what I did is I created a crafty tracker. At the bottom I have some different things I want to do each month and then a coordinating color. So when I complete one of these, I color in a hexagon up top to go with it. I do have this as a free printable for my subscribers. I have ones that are monthly and then I have just a My 2020 Crafty Tracker. If you want to check this out and maybe download it for yourself, I will have the video linked below with that link for you. If you do share your Crafty Tracker online, I would love it if you would use the hashtag, hashtag CMCA. 2020 crafty tracker that way I can stop by and see how you're doing as well couple things I learned this month from my crafty tracker from seeing it is I am awfully good at getting online and looking at Instagram and looking at YouTube and looking at blogs leaving love at all those replying to comments but I'm not so good at getting crafty actually coming down and creating something you'll see here my got crafty color it's here like six times and then I have like 40 or 50 leave love on Instagram or YouTube. So in February, I do want to focus more on seeing some more of this color show up in my crafty tracker. Another thing I learned is I probably put way too many hexagons on this page because I thought I did pretty good overall and it's not even half full. So maybe next year if I do this again, I'll make less. Now let's see some of my specific goals and how I did on that. I made another tracker just so you could see it clearly on screen and I could keep track of it easily. And I have monthly goals for the year and then I have some goals that I just want to get done sometime before the end of the year. So I put those at the bottom. On the top for my monthly goals, let's go over the ones that I actually completed. And then I'm going to tell you about a couple that I didn't and one of them went really wrong but I think just having a focus I think has helped me this month so even though I didn't accomplish everything not gonna beat myself up over it my first goal is to make two sheet loads of cards that is actually physically making the cards that's not me making a file for my subscriber I was able to do that I want to use my silhouette at least one time I actually used it three I made a little t-shirt for a teddy bear for school and then I have some vinyl cut that I'm making for library helpers at the school as well 
And the third thing I made on my silhouette are custom stickers for my YouTube channel. So if you received a card from me earlier this month, you might have gotten one of those in your card. Third, I wanted to color on at least one card, which I did that. It was a Valentine's Day card, and I will pop a picture up on the screen now for you. Next, I wanted to use an old stamp set. I actually did that twice. I really dug into my closet and got out some old stamps. Next, use an old embellishment or tool. I know one of those was at least an old set of nest abilities, and I might have used some other tools as well that were old. For now, we're going to skip the limit crafty spending to $50. Next, I wanted to send two cards to family members. I think I ended up sending about five because I did have some Christmas thank you cards to send at the beginning of the month. For my send or give two cards to friends or coworkers, I only gave out one for a friend at work's birthday. So definitely next month, I want to do better at that. Finally, in the sending or giving out cards, I wanted to send two cards to subscribers. I ended up sending out six total. Two cards went with prizes that were won earlier in the month. And then the other four were kind of like thank you cards or just little notes to subscribers who had sent in cards for the show us your sheet load feature. If you ever want to send me a little card in the mail, I would love it. My heart skips a beat when I open up my P.O. box and see a card in there. My P.O. box is always in the bottom of my description box. Over here on the right, I want to complete the 4 on Friday collab video. And I did. This month, my friend Danny and I used the Gina K Designs Wreath Builder templates to create projects. I'll put a picture up on the screen of what I created. And I will have that video linked in the description box below. Next, I want to follow through with the Crafty Goals collab video. I did do that with the intro video that I shared. I want to create and share the sheet loads of cards file. So that just means every month I want to have a new file for my subscribers. And I do have a January 2020 file. That also, guess what, will be linked below. The next ones are about leaving love online for other creators. I was able to leave love on at least 20 YouTube videos. I left love on more than 10 Instagram posts and leaving love on at least five blog posts. Right now, that is mainly just my friend Danny's blog. I don't follow a lot of other blogs, but hers is super inspiring, so I like to go over there and see what she has created. She will be linked below if you want to go check out her blog. Another goal of mine is to reply to all my YouTube and Instagram comments. Sometimes it might just be a heart, but I do try to let you know that I have read your comment and appreciated it. I was able to keep up with that all month. I want to post at least eight YouTube videos. In January, I posted 13. And finally, for my monthly goals, I had a specific one that would only be for January, and it was to organize my Gina K ink spots. For Christmas, I think I got five sets of eight ink spots, and they came in plastic bags with kind of cardstock inserts in it. So I wanted something a little more sturdy, so I'll show you what I did with those. Here are two of the five sets that I organized. What I did was use four by six photo boxes. You can get these at Michael's. Mine actually came in a big case of maybe 20, and I had a couple of those cases, so I just pulled out some of the individual boxes. I put the cardstock insert from the actual packaging on the top so it tells me what colors are in there and I store them upside down so if I flip the box over I can actually see the colors because this side doesn't say the name of the inks but if you open these up then the names are right on top that way the ink stays at the top of the pad and I can easily see when I open it up which ink I need I just love having these now. I'm able to match a lot of my papers that I didn't have inks for before. When they're on my shelf, just so I can see which set they are, I did just write with a fine Sharpie marker on the edge which set it was. Before I go on to my yearly goals and if I've accomplished any of those, let's go back to my limit crafty spending to $50 a month goal. I did so bad on this. I mean, it's like so bad that I really shouldn't spend any money in February or March to make up for it. I don't know what it was this month. 
sometimes in my head when I say, oh, I'm going to limit my spending, I'm going to try to use what I have, I'm not going to buy anything, it's like I go berserk and everything I see I have to buy. Just a heads up, really not good on that. Now let's go ahead and skip to something happier, my yearly goals and how I did on those. I was able to meet one of my yearly goals already, and that is the one where I wanted to get two months ahead on my sheet load of cards files and do a call for collaborators. I'm excited to announce that with the March sheet load of cards issue, I will have a team of 15 collaborators helping me promote sheet load of cards and helping promote each other's either YouTube channel, Instagram account, or blog. I'll be back later this month on the 15th to announce who those 15 crafters are. So I hope you'll stop back by and find out. Some of the ones I didn't get accomplished first was to do four lives on YouTube. I didn't do any this month, so my total for the year is still zero. I am slowly getting there though. I do have a poll on my communities tab that I would like to know that if I did do a live video, when would you most likely be able to watch? So I would appreciate it if you would go to my communities tab and vote on that poll. The next one is to reach 12,000 subscribers on YouTube. I started out the year with 8,160 and currently as of January 31st, I have 8,503. Finally, for my yearly goal, I want to reach 800 followers on Instagram. My Instagram name is at callmecraftyal. I started out the year with 466, and as of January 31st, I am up to 539. I would love it if you would be willing to help me out on my subscribers and my followers on Instagram by sharing my channel and maybe shouting me out on Instagram. Thanks in advance for considering that. Now that you know how I did in January, let's talk a little bit about what I want to do in February. For February, my goals are pretty much the same. I have my monthly and my yearly goals that were already printed, but there are a couple things that I want to do specifically. The first one is, I found out today that there's a local kind of flea market, but you can sell crafts there as well, and it's indoors and it's year round. And I want to contact them to find out how much it might be to get like a little booth, or maybe I saw some people have almost a bookshelf and I would like to try to sell my handmade cards. So I'm gonna do that. We'll see if I get an email back and if that's gonna be something. I'll let you know next month. And then my other goal for February is to share a video here on YouTube that shows you how I store my paper pumpkin kit stamps once the kit is all done. I had a subscriber ask me, I think it was last week, how I do that. And I enjoy my storage and I think it might be something useful for you. So I want to share that with you. How are you doing on your 2020 crafty goals? If you have any, let me know in the comment section below. Now, I hope that you'll go check out the other collaborators to see how they did in January. Again, they're all linked below or you can click on that hashtag. Until my next video, I hope you're having a crafty day. Bye-bye.